rice breeding is a process and it involves science and it involves observation and it involves technology and we have all those things here at the Rice Research and Extension Center. The process starts with actually evaluation of germplasm. Dr. Yan will speak a little bit more about that in his presentation, but rice germplasm is important for us to be able to select material that is adapted, rice material that is adapted to Arkansas so that it will be profitable for the producers, for you guys. Profitability depends a lot on yield and that's one of our major objectives in the rice breeding program here at Arkansas. The process starts with, uh, like I said, evaluation of the germplasm. That means we look at the yields of the germplasm, we look at the quality of the germplasm. Rice is one of the few crops that is actually eaten directly, so the aspects of quality are extremely important all the way from the actual appearance of the grain because the purchaser, the consumer, will first see the rice in the supermarket and if it's not appealing in the little bag, they won't buy it. And the interesting thing is that that appearance is genetic, okay? You've often seen the little grain of rice is clear, it's translucent, but perhaps it has a little white center in it. That's a characteristic we call white belly and is undesirable. Some germplasm lines have that, some germplasm lines don't have that. And so one of our objectives in the breeding program is to make sure that rice doesn't have that and we select against that trait. Once we have identified germplasm sources that seem to be fairly uh, adapted to Arkansas conditions, um, we begin the process of hybridization or crossing with, uh, with different uh, sources. Like one source may have a great yield, but it may have very bad milling quality. Milling quality is the ability of the rice to go through the mill and not break up into little pieces that are not as valuable as a whole grain rice. So milling quality is extremely important. So you may have a very high yielding variety, but if it doesn't mill very well, if the milling quality is low, it's pretty much useless. But we can cross that high yielding variety with a variety that has excellent milling quality. It may not have the high, the super high yield of the high yielding one, but it may have very good milling quality. We hybridize those two, we cross them, and then we select the ones from that cross that actually have high yield and high milling quality. Sounds easy, right? It's not real easy, and it's not real cheap, and it involves a lot of work, and a lot of thinking, and a lot of science. And the first step that we have to do is we have to plant those varieties, those two varieties, let's say, so that they will flower at the same time, okay? Because to make a cross, we have to take the female and cross it to the male. That sounds simple enough too, but the problem is that rice is self-pollinating, okay? If you just let rice go without doing anything, it's going to produce grain by itself and self-pollinating. So we have to go through a process of actually taking the male part out of rice and crossing it and putting pollen on there. And that process is called pollination. I mean emasculation. So in our laboratory over there we have a crew, a very good crew, that actually hand cuts each little what's going to be a kernel, it's a little flower, and then they suck out with the pump, suck out the anthers, the male parts of that, of the one that's going to be the female, okay? And the reason that we have to plant 
I, I, I'm going to back step a little bit. We have to plant those two varieties at different times early in the season so that they'll flower together. I think I mentioned that already. But that's not simple either because we transplant those out in the field. So my crews out there, oftentimes in very cold, very harsh conditions, transplanting our parents into our crossing lot to make sure that the males and females will nick together. Okay, so we're in the lab. We emasculate them. We have females now that are pure females. We have to make sure there's no anthers left in there because they'll self-pollinate and then it will be a self, it won't be a cross. Then Jill goes out and collects pollen from the male parent that we're gonna be using. She has to do that systematically. It's not just going to the field saying, yeah, I'm gonna take this one, yeah, I'm gonna take this one. We know exactly the crosses are programmed early in the year. She knows exactly which ones are gonna be done. She knows that this day, maybe this one's ready, this one's not. So it's a, it's a complex system of, of combining females with males. So she actually gets that, gets the pollen, puts the pollen on the emasculated or the male or the female plants. And if we're lucky, if it's a good day, if it's, you know, if it's not raining like it has been this year all the time, she gets good pollen and we get a cross. And if you look in the greenhouse, if you happen to be walking by the greenhouse right directly behind us, the larger one, if you look in that greenhouse, you can see a lot of plants that have little glycine bags on them, little bags, and those are the ones that have actually been crossed. And this year we have done a wonderful job with a, a, a historically high number of crosses successfully done. Thank you, Jill. And so, therefore, we have the cross made. Then we go into the phase of selection and evaluation of the material. Once you make a cross, the genes independently assort, which means that all the different genes from this parent and all the different genes from this parent combine and become all different in the plants. So in the F2, which is the second stage after the cross, we may have a plot that's 10, 12 feet long and six feet wide. And in that plot, every plant's different, genetically different and uh, looking different. And so we have to go into that plot and hand pick the ones that look best to us, the ones that have the best grain types, the one that is long grain if it's a long grain cross, medium grain if it's a medium grain cross. We hand pick those, hand select them, and har hand harvest those. And in our process of breeding, which is pure line breeding, it takes us seven, well, four or five years to get to a point where rice actually looks like this, and it's not just a bunch of separate plants. Now we have certain things that we do to shorten that amount of time because number one here in Arkansas, because we have winter time, we can only plant one time a year. All right. So if we just did it normally, it would take us five years for this process. However, we have, we rent land in Puerto Rico, which isn't cheap also. And so we're able to send our material down there in the in the F3 generation, in the third generation of this uh, segregation period and evaluation period. So in Puerto Rico, we plant them in September and we're able to harvest them in December or January. So we gain a year. Sometimes if we're lucky, we can harvest them immediately in Puerto Rico, plant them again in Puerto Rico and get two generations two generations so we save another year by using the Puerto Rico nursery and I call this the evaluation and selection phase the selection phase means that we have to be able to start looking for traits that are going to be acceptable to you guys to the farmers here in Arkansas one of those traits is disease resistance blast disease resistance for example we don't really get a lot of good uniform blast disease here in Stuttgart, and that's good. But 
It's good for the farmers, but it's not so good for us because we want to be able to see the ones that are actually going to get the disease. So, and we can't do it here. We take some of our lines and take them to the pine tree station up near Colt, and we get a little bit better pressure, disease pressure for blast. That helps us some. Another method we use is molecular aided selection. We can actually, we have a lab here, we can take seeds from these F3 plants and look at the DNA of those plants and if the gene for blast resistance is in that individual plant by using a so-called marker which has that particular resistance gene comparing it to the the plant and, and we can tell whether or not that plant has that blast resistance gene or not if it does not we throw it away we get rid of it so we don't have to look for, at it anymore if we didn't do that we would be clogged up with a lot of material that we wouldn't know whether it was blast resistant or not and in the end if we were if that was our objective then we would have to get rid of stuff that was blast susceptible that we didn't know about so by using Puerto Rico nursery and molecular aided selection were able to more efficiently uh, you know progress through this evaluation and selection process in the early generation of rice breeding so instead of five years we may be able to cut it down to about three years after we get something that's kind of after those five years three to five years we get something that looks sort of like this then we put them in yield trials the yield trials are the, the time when our observations are confirmed. Because we, in our early selection process, we're looking to see that these plants, that one looks good, I think that one's gonna yield good. That one looks good, I think I'm gonna, that's gonna yield good. We throw away a lot of stuff based on our observations. So then, in this particular time, we confirm our observations and some of them are not going to be right so we have to do extensive yield testing with a lot of different varieties and be able to select out of this data the science the statistics that result from all these yield trials we can select the ones that actually do yield higher than the other ones so that process also cuts down the number from well for example, this year we have over 960 F2 populations. And hopefully in seven years we'll get one variety out of that, one or two or three. So this whole process of selection, evaluation, yield testing results in what we hope will be varieties that are acceptable to the farmers, not only acceptable, but profitable and and just good for the farmers, the producers, the consumers of that rice, and for the state of Arkansas.